Halloween is almost here, so we're giving the homemade treatment to the classic 1931 film, Dracula, and here's how we did it. Welcome, Transylvania, down the street. Please, come join me. Vampires are super popular right now. They have been for the past several years, but you can't think of vampires without thinking of Dracula. He's the one that started it all in this film as played by Bela Lugosi. So to cast our main character of Dracula, we reached out to homemade movies veteran Chris Singer. Now he's played a lot of different roles for us. This time we used his bald head to our advantage because Dracula has very slicked back hair. Rather than trying to get a wig, we haven't had a lot of luck with wigs that go back and stay really tight like that. They're usually a mangled mess. We decided to just paint the hair directly onto Chris's head. And I started by drawing out the lines and kind of giving it a little feathered kind of hairline look. And then to fill in the rest of the space, we used this black hairspray stuff that we use. Usually it's for changing the hair color of somebody, but this time it went right on his head and it looked pretty darn good once it was all in place. That is perfect! <laughs> Dude! I'm coming over every day! Alright! <laughs> and then we just had to fill in his eyebrows, and then also he has black lipstick in this. Dracula has sort of that menacing kind of sunken eyes in the shadows, and so we sort of just put a little bit more dark around Chris's eyes. We could actually just do a transplant if you want. Oh yeah, we do that. Let's go do that real quick. Let's go do it. Alright. Dracula wears a handful of different costumes in this. They're all variations of the same thing. It's mostly just a white shirt with a white vest and a black suit jacket. Then a few other pieces change out. For instance, he starts out with a white bow tie, and and then we've got the collar. This is the classic vampire Dracula collar. Ben made a collar just out of cardboard with tape on it so we could kind of get the bend in it. Give me your neck. I will sink my teeth into it. So we just taped it right to the back of the suit and then kind of used one of our Batman capes as the cape. And then later on, we can switch out the white bow tie for the emblem that Dracula wears. This is classic. This is made out of a piece of cardboard and it has like a penny in the middle and it has some little plastic stars around the sides and painted it gold and then just attached it to some pieces of tape so it could hang around his neck. You might not see it up close, but he is wearing a monocle around his neck. So that's just like a thin piece of string with little monocles at the bottom. And also in a couple shots, he's got his long creepy nails. So we just used little pieces of masking tape and kind of cut them into the pointy nail shape and stuck them right onto Chris's fingers. Now they're blue in real life. Blue, the color of the blood before it comes out and meets the oxygen. But we knew that this is all gonna be in black and white. So it didn't matter actually what color they were, we're just going for the right shade. So Ben did some experiments with different colors of tape. We've got duct tape, or do we use white, do we use black? You know, what is the right tone? I think the blue. It's interesting shooting in black and white because colors just don't matter. It's really just the shade and that includes when we're doing the lighting even. You know, we could turn on the bedroom light and it's really warm. Normally that would have a really red orange look that we wouldn't want, but once you turn it in black and white, it all looks pretty good. So you have a lot more leeway actually and you just focus on the contrast on what's light and what's dark because once it's all black and white, that's all that really matters. Cool. All right, that's it. <laughs> Speaking of black and white, we called upon our go-to black and white actress, Eden. She was in our psycho scene and she has a great classic look for these kinds of old movies. So she plays a handful of different ladies in this. So it's just a matter of, okay, in this shot, put your hair up. In this shot, your hair's more down. In one shot, she wears a brown wig and lays on the ground. So she just kind of filled in for everybody. One shot, she's supposed to get carried by Dracula, but for that, we decided to go with a dummy. So we just made sort of like a pillow with a dress on it and some sock legs and then used a little mannequin head and put a blonde wig on it. I can't really work with this kind of a performer. She's not giving me anything to work with here. That way, Chris didn't have to actually try and carry Eden around. So it's really just him carrying a dummy in that shot. Somebody <laughs> find this woman a hospital. Oh, oh. <laughs> and she's dead. What happened? He decapitated her. <laughs> Dracula. She has no blood. So also in this trailer is Renfield. Now that's Dracula's crazy buddy who has some big crazy eyes. So we reached out to an actor friend, Ari, who totally nailed this role. He really got the crazy bug eyes down pat. There's one really funny shot that takes place on the couch with Eden and another random guy. He's only in this one shot. So we had an actor, Joe, come in. Now this is an old movie. So there's some of these moments that it's the big cheesy overacting that was fine for the time, but we find really funny now. Dracula? What's he done to you today? Tell me. So we're all cracking up at this scene. That's a great face. And so they really nailed these over the top performances. Uh -huh, I can dress myself. My first dress by Milton Bradley. There are three very particularly long takes in this trailer too, and they're really funny and they have great performances, but getting the timing down was really tricky. And we've done this so many different times now in homemade movies, but we came up with a new system this time to really try and get the timing perfect. We broke out those individual clips and put a little timer at the beginning so it could go, you know, one, two, three, go. We know exactly where the start frame is. 
and then we can try rehearsing it along with the actual playback over and over along with like a beep track so we could kind of memorize the seconds and I wouldn't have to call them out manually like I normally do. Something so incredible. I forgot the lines, but it was incredible. So the first really long one that we tried has Van Helsing in it and I play him. So we just sprayed my hair gray for that and wore a suit. Now this jewelry box that we made was just made of cardboard, made sure it had the top that opened and put some little legs on there. There's little bits of straw, just some tape for a hinge so it opens and then drew some little decorations on there and some little details. We needed to make sure it was sturdy because Dracula had to knock it out of my hands and we knew we were gonna have to do this take lots of times to get it right. So it actually surprisingly stayed intact. It didn't break at all. And we did the same thing for that shot on the couch with Joe and Eden where we played it back. They could just say the lines along with the playback. And then when we feel like we've got it and we've got all the motions and the movements and all the little details, then we go with the silent version so I can watch the playback along with the performance and make sure everything is lining up. That way there's no guessing. All right, nice. <laughs> and the third shot that we used this technique for was when Renfield is talking about all the thousands of millions of rats. And Ari totally nailed his performance, but it's more than just performing it in a funny way. You really gotta get the timing down. So he really memorized all the spacing of the lines and how to say it and where to move his hands. And then I'm in that one as Van Helsing. Again, I just kind of stand there and I don't move. And then Bosco actually plays the funny guy in the background with the mustache. We called him PJ's guy because he looks like he's in his PJs. Might be a lab coat. He was supposed to be the tallest one in the scene too, so I'm actually crouching down lower, and then Ari is pretty tall, so he's crouching down even lower just to make sure that Bosco as PJ Mustache Guy is the tallest one in the shot. It's me, Mario! <laughs> <laughs> and then there's lots of other miscellaneous shots in this. There's a shot of a bat flying in a window. Instead of making one this time, we thought it would be funny to just get a rubber bat. We ended up going with a stick coming up from the bottom, and we just had to use string and like strap it on because this rubber, like nothing stuck to it. We couldn't even get tape to stick to it, so the wings are just free now, and then we kind of just like shook it up and down and we shot this in slow motion so that we could like get more motion and more slowness out of the wings. And we just did it in front of my window and put a black sheet outside so it looked dark. There's a shot where a hand comes out of a coffin and we just used my piano bench. So we kind of put up a black sheet around it kind of as the ground a little bit. There's like a piece of metal with a round handle. So we made that out of cardboard and just taped it to the side. And then Ben just reaches inside the piano bench kind of from the side and kind of tries to stay out of the side of the frame and then just has his hand coming out at the right moment. And that was it. In one of the shots, Dracula is holding a candle. I am. Um... Dracula. So we just decided instead of trying to use a big real candle, let's make one out of cardboard like we normally do. It's a little safer and easier to work with. So it's just a tube with a big white flame on it and then kind of some drawn lines that look like the dripping candle wax. But when we shot it, to make it look really bright, we want the flame to be the brightest thing and kind of make it flicker. We just stood off screen with a flashlight and kind of just flickered a bright flashlight right at it. We used the flashlight again too for another shot with Dracula because the lighting is really specific in this. Another one of these old timey tricks, they used to do this a lot in old movies was where they would just light someone's eyes for a really dramatic effect. So the best technique we came up with was just using literally two flashlights and just pointing them right at Chris's eyes. There is a shot of three ghoulish ladies in dresses walking through the catacombs that we just shot here in the house and found kind of like the archway between my dining room and living room and figured that looks kind of like catacombs. But for those three ladies, it's actually myself and Ben and Bosco wearing dresses. Bosco, can you zip me up? Yeah, hold on, sweetie. <laughs> and finally, there's the big stunt guy tumbling slowly downstairs. Actually, the staircase in Ben's house has a very similar layout. All right, so Ben and Bosco are over at Ben's house because I'm here doing music at home. So I'm FaceTiming with them so I can see the camera setup that they're doing. The guy really does tumble down slowly, so we figured this is gonna be perfectly safe. Ben's really good with stunts as it is, but it's such a slow tumble, it's hilarious. So he pulled it off, he managed to not break his neck or break his leg, but if he had hurt himself, you know, I was not on the premises. That was my plan all along. This entire trailer takes place in the four by three aspect ratio, not the usual wide like you're used to seeing. We did this once before with our homemade Batman and Robin TV intro scene, and we're doing it again here. We wanted to stay true to that size. So in order to make sure we got the composition right on the shots, we just put some little strips of tape on the monitor so that we kind of know where the edges were gonna be when we're shooting it. This trailer has a lot of titles on screen. Normally when there's titles, we've done it always in camera, in front of the actors while we're shooting it, and it's always just transparencies in front of the lens that we can see the actors through it and kind of like just move it around and it gets really complicated and it gets really hard because the transparency is so shiny. So depending on how your lights are, you could get lots of glares and things. So in this one, we wanted to try something different that was still homemade. So I've got each individual shot 
got separated out so I can play it on a loop on the big monitor here and then I've got the camera pointed directly at it so all I have to do is lift up each individual title into the corresponding shot and that's how they're going to overlay onto the shots and I'm matching it with the original timing whether it's going to slide in from the bottom or slide in from the side or whatever so I'm trying to get the timing just right so in the end it's kind of a fancy trick but hey it's still hand drawn and it's still entirely in camera so what more do you want from me this trailer also has a really funny voiceover over the whole thing it's super old timey so I did the voice for this Old timey trailer voice. The original terrifying story of a maniac took the form of a vampire bat and lured innocent girls to a fate truly worse than death. <laughs> Sounds like <that. laughs> There's a pretty elaborate music score that goes through this whole thing too. So once again, it's me just using my voice, doing layer after layer, trying to get all the different sounds. So that's how we made our homemade Dracula trailer. Cue that montage. Ah, he's alive! Bounty is the quicker picker-upper. Ah, this is bad! Oh my god, I'm ready for Halloween! Now, don't take it off for a couple weeks. Couple weeks. It's the catacomb dancers, everybody! Oh, boy. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you, Dracula. <laughs> So my bedroom is laid out pretty much exactly like we need in the shop. We got a lamp, we got a bed, there you go. It oh. is very smoky in here. Can we have to wait. Let's go. I will make it to your chimney and I will yell down, Hello, it is Santa Claus. Invite me in. They will be fooled. Well, let me know if you have any other questions on how we made it and I'll answer back in the comments and come back to Cinefix for more homemade movies. Ah, here I go, as a bat. Oh wait, uh, how do I, how do I get out of here?